Almost there. Tighten it up. Tighten it up. Tighten it up. Come on, baby. Come on. Let's get this. Get that one a little bit lower. Hey guys, I am your girl Kiki Soto and welcome back to a very special episode of Urban Girl Gardening. Today I am doing a collab, y'all. We are going to be talking about trellising. Trellising your garden from the backyard to the homestead in collaboration with Barefoot in the Garden. My girl Chrissy, if you are not following her channel, please head on over and subscribe because this is part one and she will be doing part two. Well, as you can see, we've got some oldies, but I've also got some goodies. I am going to be bringing you three ways to use a trellis in your backyard. I'm gonna show you how to make the most of the space that you have using these techniques. You guys ready? But first, thank you to everyone who is returning, who is a returning UGG fam member. I'm so happy to have you here. And if you are new to my channel, go ahead, take a moment, like, subscribe, leave me a comment so I know that you're here so I can say hey, and you can say hey, and then you can come in for this socially distanced hug because you are now a part of the UGG fam. Let's get started. All right guys, we are bringing you three types of trellises. They're gonna be in three different budgets and hopefully you'll find something here that you like and you, or a little innovation, a little inspiration to get you started to help you maximize the space in your garden. The first trellis that we're gonna show you is the infamous cattle panel arch trellis. Depending on how many of these trellises you're gonna need, it's gonna determine how much you really pay. So the cattle panels themselves, cost us 25 bucks. The T-posts were $5 each. These are six foot T-posts. Hammered and two feet into the ground for stabilization. And then we also picked up this T-post driver, which makes life so, so, so much easier yes, it does. Um, than trying to hammer it in or mallet it in or however you try. You just take this bad boy. This is the cheaper one. It was like $33. Take this bad boy and hammer it into the ground, and that part is done. So all together, all together, this cost us about 120 some odd dollars for two cattle panels, eight T-posts, and a T-post driver. Yep. Oh, and also the clips to put the cattle panel securely onto the T-posts. So first. We already measured out everything. Our garden is about 16 feet wide, our in-ground garden. So we wanted to have the cattle panel completely centered. It's in the middle four feet of the garden. So yep. it's four feet wide, so we have a nice arch here in the middle. And we still have room to walk down the center. <laughs> Handle itself is here, it's attached, but it's not quite as stable as we want it to be. So I'm going to bring you guys in and I'm going to show you how I attach the clips to the actual post and the panel to secure it tightly. Now I'm going to show you how I secure the cattle panel itself to the T-post using the actual clips. Some people use zip ties. I feel like the zip ties will wear down in just like a year or so, and this metal ain't going nowhere. So this is what I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use two on each of the four posts, just like we did with the first cattle panel. And I'm going to be using a hammer as well, and you will see why. So Jeremy's gonna bring you in, and he's gonna show you exactly what I'm doing. So 
this is dust this is not ash today so don't go talking about me okay all right this is from here you see that you see that okay <laughs> so I'm going to take the smaller hook first and I'm going to hook it around here just on the outside of the cattle panel and you're gonna stay then I'm going to take this wider part longer hook there they have specific name got names guys I don't quite remember what the names are now I have this side sticking out and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the hammer and kind of just use it to bend it and twist it around the other side you guys see that and then I'm just going to hammer the clip up and secure around it and now your t-post is secure all right guys this thing isn't going anywhere anytime soon so i'm going to show you our next example of trellising and it's a little less expensive than this so this next trellis is going to be using a bit of refurbishing what we have here is what is going to be our sweet potato bed and i want to trellis my sweet potato vines i do not want them sprawling all over the place I only have 153 days and we all know that sweet potatoes need at least 120 so they are going to be getting most of the time here since that is the case i don't want my sweet potatoes to take root anywhere else i want my sweet potatoes to grow right where i put the slips and focus all their energy on that which is why i will be trellising the vines up and not letting them sprawl all over the place okay so i have some wooden stakes here Three of them and this is actually what I used to trellis the tomatoes last year yeah. single stem tomatoes but we'll get into that later on at another time when we get to planting so I had three wooden stakes one in each corner and one in the center here up against the back of my raised bed so I'm going to show you what else we're going to be using to complete this trellis idea here we have some fencing this is the fencing that we use to fence in our entire garden area uh, previously it was only fencing in the in ground this year we decided to go and buy 150 foot right 150 feet 150. 150 feet of fencing um and we have plenty left and nothing else to fence so we will be using it to make a trellis how simple was that guys super easy so the fencing itself cost us $30, and that was for 150 feet. They are way smaller. There's 25 feet. Like you can buy them any amount of fencing that you want, that you need. This is not as firm as the cattle panel, but if you secure it, which we are about to do, using those good old zip ties, we're going to secure this wiring to the, the wooden stakes, which came in a six pack. Six pack six pack for I think five dollars so we got five dollars and we have thirty dollars thirty five bucks and that's if you need this much fencing if you don't you don't have to buy this much so I'm gonna bring you in so you can see how we cut and secure the cabinet okay so the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you have your fencing up to the height that you want it to be and I believe this fencing is what three feet long that's a pretty good height. I'm not going to put it all the way, like right to the bed. I'm going to train the slips to come up this way. And as you can see, the fencing is very pliable. So I'm just going to make sure to squeeze around so it's already taking the shape. I'm going to make sure your stake is in securely into the ground. And now I have a zip tie and literally. I'm just going to put the zip tie through and secure it. Bam. And then I'll just take some snippers and cut. Super simple. I'll do it again. Because these are on the ends, I'm going to do it in three places this is the bottom one here oh that's a broken piece so this is the bottom one so 
I placed the last one here. Snip. And look at that, y'all. So I'm going to continue and then I'll bring you back when we're at the end. Okay, so now I'm taking the end of the fencing here and I'm just cutting off what obviously I don't need. So, and I'm just using a regular pair of pruners, nothing special. And the chicken fencing, it cuts right there. And guys, make sure your steaks are in good. Look at that, y'all. Look at that. So I'm just going to fold this around just to kind of keep the shape a little bit. And guys, this fencing, this is the same fencing like I told you. This was um, surrounding our in-ground garden last year and not the entire garden. And if you think you can't grow anything and it be stable on here, we grew our, cu our cucumbers up here. They bind up and over the fence. We grew our cantaloupes. And if you've been with me since I started my channel last fall, then you were there to, um, to see us come harvest our cantaloupes. And I actually had them hanging in pantyhose to stabilize them so that they didn't fall off the vine. But yeah, you can grow on this. And all we're putting right now is some little sweet potato vines. But if you wanted to do something else, like some cucumbers or something, on the side of one of your raised beds, just for some extra space, you sure enough could. So I am going to zip tie these in. All right, there you have it, guys. Another simple trellising idea for your backyard garden. Now, this next one, this next one is my favorite because you want to talk about refurbishing, reusing, and recycling, y'all. Check this out. So this one here, guys, Papa Bear is going to finish this up, but we already started. Guys, we are refurbishing Sky's crib. This crib has given us six years, actually, because it started out as AJ's, right? Yep. Started out as AJ's crib. AJ's just turned six. Sky just turned two. So we got six years of use out of this crib. And you know what? We're not done with it yet. We're going to show you how to turn an old crib into a trellis. So all we did was we went to the hardware store and got some hinges. And we are drilling the hinges in on each side. You want to make sure that the hinge is centered between both sides of, between both sides of the um, crib rails that we're going to be putting together. All right, guys, we had to switch gears because our drill died. So trust the old screwdriver, oldie but a goodie, and it is doing the job. And it is. So we got the hinges in on both sides. All right. All right, the hinges are in, and now we're going to lift this up. All right, we got the hinges in. Now we're going to lift it, flip it over. How is this for refurbishing guys look at that this is a six-year-old crib that is now an outdoor trellis all right papa bear let's measure this and see how much trellising we've given ourselves we have how high up is that four, four feet four, four foot two inches we've given us ourselves eight Feet of trellising guys by reusing a baby crib these are the end rails here that we're using to stabilize the actual trellis I had to bring y'all around because this turned out so cool and this area 
right here. This is where the pots are going to go so that our veggie can just be trained to climb right up. I'm going to bring this out, guys. Look at that. Eight feet of trellising by refurbishing your baby's crib. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me here at Urban Girl Gardening for this super dope collaboration. I am like beyond proud of this one right here. We brought you three ways to trellis in your backyard garden. Super simple, super easy from $100 to these hinges costed us what? Three, four dollars for the pack? Something like that, five dollars. We already had the crib, y'all. So, what you got to say about that? <laughs> As a bonus, I want to show you guys this beautiful trellis right here. I used this last year to grow um, rattlesnake beans and dwarf tailor beans. The rattlesnake beans, they they vine up here so beautifully. We have the beans trellis up here so nicely. We have beautiful pinkish, purplish striped beans and beautiful leaves and flowers uh, climbing all the way up here. And as you can see, I have it centered between my two um, beds right here, my two garlic beds. And what I'm going to do is either do the bean idea again or do a small cucumber like a lemon cucumber. So if you're looking for something like this as well, this I found on Amazon for 20 bucks. Super cute. You could even put a pot right here in the center and grow beautiful flowers up and out of it. I mean, this, it's absolutely gorgeous. Thank you guys so much for being here at Urban Girl Gardening. Stay tuned for part two, part two of trellises in the garden from backyard to the homestead. Go over to Barefoot in the Garden right now. Right now she is premiering and she's gonna tell you how she does her trellis thing over in the homestead. Like, subscribe, learn with me, grow with me. Thank you so much for being here.